trying to understand what he's doing. Dealt with that with his grandfather. How has he dealt with that? Someone in the press needs to ask him these questions. Can he be an honest broker at the table with the nations who are our traditional biggest allies? Or does he see them as an enemy as his grandmother did? And as his grandmother said, he saw. Instead, all we get is silence from the media and silence from the White House. These questions should have been asked, not in a mean-spirited way, not in a gotcha sort of way, but in a real, true, honest conversation. Wouldn't you like to know? Should have been done before the election. The media continually, over and over again, talks about George W. Bush and all of the things that he's inherited. Can somebody please, in an honest, kind sort of way, for the good of our country, ask if there's anything, anything important that he may have inherited from Granny Sarah. Overton uh, Window, number one New York Times bestseller. It's my first uh, thriller. It is, uh, it's not only made to entertain, but also to uh, be able to go back and pour over. I think National Review did a review on this uh, and said it's a book you can read a couple of pages and just put down and think about for a while and do research on. Just start here. If you have the book, first two words of the story, Eli Churchill, Elijah Churchill. Who's he? Overton Window. Available bookstores everywhere. Okay. Radically busy week all across the globe for radicals. Crazy. 900 people were arrested in the G20 protest in Toronto this weekend. ADD moment here, if I may just point out, um, zero arrests at the 912 rally. Just point that out. Police uh, seized machetes and baseball bats, sledgehammers and gas masks and body armor. There was a crossbow, an electric drill, saws, crowbars, shields, aluminum bats uh, and uh, dog repellent and bamboo rods, but that's it, that's all they found. Anarchists had a clear message, it was end capitalism. But you wouldn't know it from the way the protesters were painted by the media. Here's the Globe and Mail describing the protesters. Quote, they were yoga teachers. Yoga teachers, soup kitchen volunteers, community organizers, university students from southern Ontario, Quebec. They reject the common portrayal as ignorant pack of angry young men. I bet they do. According to Chris Bowden, he is a hip-hop duo, Test Their Logic, spelled wrong, by the way. Uh, it's one of the uh, movement's most visible proponents of property damage. Quote, here it is. We don't just crawl up from sewers from protests. Uh, we are not violent people. I'm filled with love, love for this planet, not for pacifism and the status quo. By the way, they burned police cars. They showed love for someone else besides the planet. <laughs> right there, can you see him? <laughs> yeah, there he is. There he is. I love this one. These are all over. That's Chairman Mao, in case you can't make it out. Oh, there he is. Yeah. I recognize him because I see a lot of this, his pictures, you know, in the... In fact, I think... Do we have that picture from the White House Christmas tree? I love this. It made me so festive inside. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, Christmas ornaments in the White House Christmas tree. <laughs> Hmm. Who's been saying these are connected? Oh, that's... <laughs> By the way, over in Greece, let me show you the picture there. Union protesters are swimming in a sea of red. Coincidence. Youth clashed uh, with police during a strike against pension and labor reforms in Detroit this weekend. The U.S. Social Forum was held. I love this. Guess who was there? Oh, it's great. Bill Ayers. Yeah. He was there for a session called Education for Radical Transformation. Oh, kind of sounds spooky. The World Socialist website called this a festival of resistance, where thousands of left-wing activists of every stripe came to downtown Detroit for a lively show of opposition to the system. Here's what they had to say about Border Patrol agents. By the way, this video is from VeramSurum.com. Watch this. It's great. When we go into our restaurants and there's Border Patrol sitting there, would you sit next to the Ku Klux Klan if they were sitting in a restaurant with a hood on over their heads? No, I wouldn't. Thank you. Yes. Then say that when you see them. Say that when you see them because they have no good intentions. They have only intentions of destroying. 
Wow. i got to show you because this is only just a little bitty part of what went on. We'll have much more on this forum tomorrow. These are not isolated incidences. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. You got a spot here, got a spot here, got a spot here, got a spot here. You have chicken pox. Hello? It's happening in Europe. It's happening in Canada. It's happening in the U.S. Socialists and communists coming out of the woodwork to co-opt the youth and spread a dangerous disease. Tomorrow we'll expose it because it's coming to a city near you. The longest serving senator in U.S. history died yesterday at the age of 92. Well, I, I have to make mention of this to set the record straight. President Obama is remembering Democratic Robert, Democrat Robert Byrd as a voice of principle and reason. Wow. He's being remembered now as a guy who just served in the Senate. I'd like to point out that he also served in the KKK. The senator did apologize numerous times over the years for his Klan connections and for countless, countless racist comments. And maybe, you know, look, I'm not here to judge. Forgive him. Fine. But let's not whitewash somebody's history. It's important to learn from the past. And yesterday, when he died, everybody was running pieces in the mainstream media. If I saw him playing the fiddle one more time, I was going to explode. Could we spend maybe a hair more time, less with the fiddle, and more with, oh, I don't know, what he did in the 50s and 60s? Clan days. Watch. Bird was a powerhouse and an old-fashioned crowd pleaser on the stump, whipping out his fiddle. Out of the new. <laughs> that is what was on TV, and the headlines and the obituaries. All the big papers were making little mention of Bird's once deep hatred for African Americans. Also barely mentioned, the time served in the Ku Klux Klan. Senator Byrd wasn't just a member of the KKK, he was a Klan leader, holding the titles of Klegel and Exalted Cyclops. The senator claimed to have left the organization in 1943, but later wrote a letter to the group's Grand Wizard saying, quote, the Klan is needed today as never before, and I am anxious to see its rebirth here in West Virginia, end quote. As recently as 2005, in his memoir, Byrd describes the KKK as a fraternal assembly of, quote, upstanding people, end quote. He was the only senator to vote against both African-American Supreme Court nominees, Thurgood Marshall and Clarence Thomas. He personally filibustered the landmark Civil Rights Act of 1964. He opposed President Truman's initiative to integrate the armed forces, and he said he would never fight, quote, with a Negro by my side. Rather, I should die a thousand times than to see this beloved land become degraded by race mongrels, end quote. He once called Martin Luther King a, quote, self-seeking rabble-rouser, and even told the FBI he could give a speech condemning King on the floor of the Senate, saying it was time the civil rights leader, quote, met his Waterloo. He also once said the writers of the Declaration of Independence did not intend for the words, all men are created equal, to be taken literally. My name is Robert C. Byrd. This is my constitution. Again, Robert Byrd um, did quit the KKK. He apologized for his past many times. And um, that's fine. I just think we need to remember people's pasts. I'm, I'm right now, I'm, I'm under the gun because people are now saying on the left that I am uh, distorting African American history. By what? Pointing out heroes? And pointing out people who filibustered the civil rights movement? Said that about Martin Luther King? I'm the bad guy. And he's, he's not really remembered for how he really was in those days. Let this complete the record of Senator Byrd. Don't pay any attention to those crazy people on TV. <laughs> Don't hate me because I'm so sexy. <sighs> Refreshing, isn't it? Wrap your head in duct tape, because it's going to explode. America, I'm going to shoot straight with you.
We have some cockroaches to expose tonight. Rather tasty. <laughs> oh, that's rich. We're just getting started. I don't know if you enjoy this show as much as we uh, enjoy putting it together. Well, sometimes I'll say, I need a giant eight-foot cake. And everybody goes, what for? Oh, not for the show. I just, they're yummy. Um, thank you so much for watching. I, I want to let you know that this summer we are going to take an extensive look at the heroes of the African-American community and the civil rights movement. Uh, it is a summer of restoration. And I promise you that you are going to find things out about this country that you will not soon forget. White people of America, warning. You're going to learn stuff about our country that you didn't know, but you need to see it. African Americans, I warn you, you're going to find heroes, American heroes, that for some reason have been erased all summer long. This Friday, Women of the Re Revolution from New York. Good night.